I came to Kent in 1968 and graduated in 71. 71. Yeah. I was on the three-year program. <laughs> <laughs> Quick and out. Well, first off, go back to May 2nd on Friday night. Everybody in those days went to the bars in downtown Kent. Uh, that's just what you did. Uh, so uh, I went to the bars in downtown Kent and was having a grand old time. It was a beautiful night. I still remember that. And of course, the bar started to empty out into the streets, which was the beginning of just people having a good time because you know, it was just nice weather. And uh, that was the night that I realized this, things could get very ugly very easily. Uh, because violence broke out that night and I was smart enough not to come back on Saturday night, <laughs> which a lot of my friends were not smart enough. They came back and, and uh, experienced Saturday night as well where things got even a little bit worse. On May 4th, I was sitting in a uh, finance class and the finance professor, I remember raising my hand and saying, you know, that with all the stuff that's going on on campus, it was right at 12 o'clock, by the way, uh, would you mind postponing our midterm, uh, which was scheduled for the next day? And he said, I don't care what happens. We're going to have that midterm tomorrow. Uh, you guys need to buckle down and to get out of the stuff that's going on around you, ignore it and you know, pay attention and get, get, think about why you're here in the first place. Huh. Little did he know that uh, at that particular moment in time the, the uh, students were being shot. Uh, did you hear the shot? Yes, as I left the class you could hear the shots. Uh, you didn't know exactly what it was because it was kind of muted because we were in Franklin Hall at the time, which was the business school. And I remember one of the dean's secretary who I was pretty close with. Ironically, the dean at the time was Dean Mullen. And my name is Pat Mullen, so I, I just purely coincidental. And I, so I had gotten to be pretty good friends with her, and she came running out crying that uh, students were shot uh, on the commons. So you're, you're 20 years old. What do you do when you're 20 years old? You go to the scene of the violence. <laughs> at age 61, I'd probably run away from the scene of the violence. So I went to the, uh, to the commons, and at that point in time, um, uh, saw the people. Uh, that it, by then, um, Professor Glenn had gotten everyone sitting down that was there on the uh, uh, on the commons, and uh, uh, and that they, they were trying to usher you out of the area uh, to the extent that they could. This is the National Guard. So I went into the student union, which was in the old facility at the time, uh, which is now Oscar Ritchie Hall, and. Uh, uh, proceeded to do the right thing, which was call my mother to tell her I was safe. Because, you know, of course, back in Philadelphia, where I'm from Philadelphia, and back in Philadelphia, this was going to be on the news. In the middle of the phone conversation, they cut all the lines out of Kent. So, as I'm saying to mom, I'm safe, the phone went dead, and I couldn't get back to her for several hours because there, there was no communications outside the city of Kent. So I went to a friend of mine's house uh, that lived here on campus, and she said, well, maybe our phone lines will be working because, you know, they're, they're residents of the city, but they were cut off, too. There, there was kind of, it was kind of interesting then because, of course, school ended and for, the se for the semester, and I went back to Philadelphia. My father was very pro-establishment at that point in time. You know, he really believed that you had to support the president, you had to support the war in Vietnam. And, and he really, in my mind at least, Dad, forgive me for this, but he was pretty close-minded in terms of not really wanting to hear the other side of the story. And he really radically changed when I got home that week, and he wanted to hear more about it. And I think, I think my father reflected the American public in general. I, I, think, I think Kent was instrumental in terms of people opening their minds that maybe this, this thing in Vietnam was not necessarily the right thing because at least they wanted to hear the other side of the story. Mm -hmm. And I think Kent was some, somewhat catalytic in that regard. It's part of our legacy. It's part of our history. Uh, that's why we decided to uh, go ahead and, and put the, uh, the whole commons area uh, on, uh, on the National Registry uh, for uh, Historic Places. Uh, the fact it was listed after uh, 40 years is remarkable because usually they list the Civil War sites uh, or the Revolutionary War sites. Uh, I, I think it shows uh, how important it is to our history. Uh, on the other hand, it's a distant memory for most of the current students and uh, some of the things that are going on here today are, are, uh, are, are pretty remarkable in terms of the impact that they're having on our, our economy as a whole and specifically in Northeast Ohio. I, I think it is kind of coincidental that the 40th anniversary of May 4th occurs and the 100th anniversary, but it's part of our history. It's, it's kind of the part way um, of, uh, of the 100 years uh, and, uh, and I think that it'll be interesting to see what the next 100 years uh, portrays. Uh, for Kent uh, and for America in general.